hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fair Racer vs. the Community, we would go racing with 1970s American cars. This, the, well, kind of death of the muscle car era. If you like, sort of 70, 71, 72, uh, really the last years the muscle cars were still around as incoming emissions. Regulations pretty much strangled the life out of them. <laughs> Mustang in this race runs a little bit too wide. Trying to fit too many cars in a small piece of tarmac, and it's the Mustang that uh, ends up in trouble. And that means your car selection for this is quite interesting. You have these, the last hurrah of the muscle cars, if you like, along with the cars that follow them, the not so great Camaros and Mustangs, etc. Some oddballs as well, throw it in for good measure. I was in a Corvette, and there were a few paces around the place as well. The El Camino that uh, we have the camera following here got off to a good start, did lose a position to a challenger, but uh, yeah, managed to get through the early stuff. I, as it is kind of for to tradition, was at, the, well, started at the back, because the random grid is really not very kind to me, so <laughs> I had a lot of work to be doing with my Corvette. Thankfully, for me at least, the uh, Corvette was uh, really rather nice to drive. I did struggle a little bit in terms of straight line speed. I built it to be better through these turns, and indeed it's a sweep around the outside to uh, move me up a position, although I was down chasing down one of the pacers. Uh, this particular pacer was pretty much the fastest car here when it came to the straights, and certainly one of them. The problem is, though, when you have your car like that, well, funnily enough, it's not very nice through the corners. Being built to C-Class, uh, you really do have to uh, take a fair bit of a compromise on the old on the old build. I had a look at the inside into turn one. Couldn't forget the move completed there. I've got so much grip. It's around the outside of turn two. I actually get my car well past before we get to the exit uh, of turn two. The problem is, of course, <laughs> we've now got a straight. And there goes, there goes the pacer again. Yeah, it was... <laughs> Very, very quick down down there. Although it wouldn't be long before just superior grip in my Corvette would uh, put it through. Uh, Tax Johnson had uh, joined us for this one. He was driving a Camaro Z28 in this first race. Was uh, in the middle of the pack. Sweeps around the outside of the Mustang through the final corner. It's a, long, it's a long final corner there. It is a long way around the outside of somebody's trying to get to the outside. Oh, I think it was a Javelin at turn one. Couldn't quite make that one stick. The Javelin with a bit of a slide. The Camaro's going to get the run on the exit up ahead. They're still busy fighting two way. You can see my Corvette in the background got cleared of traffic. We're starting to chase down this group a little bit as well. The Camaro pretty much holding pace with that Javelin. The Mustang carrying a huge amount of speed, but nowhere to go. In the end, the Camaro is up the inside, gets the position. The Mustang keen to try and follow past in all of that, but didn't quite have the grip to make that one work. I would be locked in a pretty large battle with said Javelin. A Chevelle uh, would have a little bit of a laggy bump off the circuit, fall back and sort of re-catch up to this group and join in the, uh, the mayhem. My Corvette's lack of straight line speed was well, a lack of straight line speed it wasn't tremendous it wasn't as bad as some of the cars that uh, were here but it was slower than a fair bit of the competition did leave it a bit of a sitting duck down towards this kind of big big braking zone and yeah i basically had to keep making <laughs> keep making up lap time and had to keep re-overtaking cars every time i got to that straight vehicles went flying past me but I was then very nice when we got to this sort of section. I could carry the speed and had the composure, although this time around I was a little bit wide across the grass. It's the Chevelle's turn, trying to get to the inside of the Javelin. Can't quite get the move fully completed. Me further back, not going side by side, can pick my line, but there's nowhere to really put my car. It was at this point, it's just which, which car do I follow? Who do I reckon is going to come out on top it's, uh, at this stage? Because the Javelin was a little bit better through the corners, the uh, Chevelle a bit faster down the straight. Still they go side by side. Still my Corvette has nowhere to really go. It's the Javelin to the inside as we head towards this uh, final quarter. I'm just kind of focusing, trying to maximise my run off of the turn if there was any opportunity. The sneaky passes up the inside Side. I couldn't quite do it. The Javel uh, would get past. At the front, it was a Plymouth, the GTX, that was leading the way, although that was coming under increasing pressure 
from, amazingly, an El Camino. Wasn't expecting an El Camino to be particularly, or doing particularly well, but uh, <laughs> the El Camino was uh, was going pretty nicely here at uh, Road America. But this was the top three, and they remained close for pretty much the entirety of the race. The El Camino with a good run out of those first corners down perhaps the longest straight on of the circuit is able to get the move done before they get to the braking zone the uh, Plymouth not quite able to uh, do much couldn't really quite or didn't really want to try firing out down the inside the El Camino would uh, get the pass done and move up into the into the lead but uh, yeah as I said that group would remain close uh, throughout uh, Johnson had a bit of a tough time I think one of the cars in the lobby was unable to see him which uh, caused his Camaro some issues as you can imagine dropping him uh, down through the order uh, with the glove against the ludicrously fast pacer the one that couldn't really get its way through the corners again the Camaro's gone right the way around the outside of that uh, final turn it will get the pass done uh, the pacer can fight back a little bit on the on the drive towards the start finish line but uh, yeah, Camaro is always going to be better by the time they get to these uh, first couple of corners but <laughs> I'm straight and then, as, as strange as it is to say, pace of power would uh, would do the job. In fact, as it comes soaring along, they're three wide down the back straight. And all of that straight line speed of the pacer would uh, put it up a position into the braking zone. Firebird also is having a little bit of a look, a little bit of a think. Can't get to the inside of the Camaro. <laughs> Pacer's, uh, you know, all of that advantage is gone in the first braking zone. But it's nice at times to have that, uh, that straight line ability. <laughs> Lack of grip. It's just a little bit too much to try and hold on to that Camaro. At the front of the race, and, well, this is how things would end. This is how it ran for the uh, for the entire time. The El Camino would go on to take victory with a little margin, but certainly not a very big one, over the chasing pair. The GTX in second with a challenger, I believe, in third. And these guys were a little bit away. Fourth place was in a Corvette. Again, uh, wasn't so far back. Fifth and back, we were kind of in, there was kind of a big battle for a while that dropped them a, a fair way down the order in all of uh, that one. I would have perhaps one of the busiest final laps. There was actually another car involved in this. The replay doesn't show. Uh, it was a little bit ahead of us until he fell off the course at the, uh, the, final, the final couple of corners. I was continuing to fight with the Chevelle. Uh, uh, the uh, the Chevelle able to get himself to the inside, but again, much as we had seen earlier, not really able to complete the manoeuvre. We were stuck going side by side through just about all of these corners. I could carry the corner speed as soon as we got out of the turn. The Chevelle would out accelerate me, and this would kind of keep things even through this mid part of the lap. I was brave around the outside, I was right up to the grass. That was all of the track, literally as much of it as I could get away with down <laughs> into the braking. I wanted to try and make sure. Chevelle wasn't able to uh, stick around the outside of me and sure enough that big muscle car couldn't quite do it. Once I got to this final corner I knew I was sorted. I knew I had the grip to be able to get around here and uh, not have to worry about the Chevelle and that would uh, put me up. It was an eighth position in the end. Johnson caught us by an absurd amount in that final lap because we were going side by side through all of that. Yeah, the car that was ahead of us uh, ended up in the ended up off at the hairpin, allowed both me and the Chevelle through. Oh, and then Johnson put me in a wall after we crossed the finish line. That was on the cooldown lap, so it's fine. Pacer came to visit as well because why not? Race number two, and we would head to the Road Atlanta Club Circuit. Unfortunately, here we would have, well, tyre bundle issues. Tyre bundle issues are notorious, shall we say, or can be notorious. Sometimes we get, get away with it, sometimes things go okay. But uh, yeah, if things go wrong at the top of the hill here, uh, all manner of chaos would uh, would ensue. And indeed, that was the case. I think it was Camaro ended up in trouble on the tyre bundle, pings across the circuit, and that really gives this top four a big breakaway. A big breakaway. The Camaro, Chevelle, King Cobra, and uh, Mercury would all manage to escape relatively unscathed, while the rest, well, a lot of the rest of us would have to take a quite severe avoiding action. 
Uh, Johnson had requested to be put at the back of the grid. Uh, didn't take him long with his uh, Firebird. He managed to survive through all of the uh, all of the traffic. Uh, I put myself because uh, to, to put someone specifically to the back of the grid, you have to do a manual a manual grid. I left everything random. I moved Johnson to the back because I was fed up of being at the back. I put myself in the middle, which then had me involved in. Well, I say I had me involved. I actually wasn't involved. I dodged what was going on, but in doing so, I dropped myself to the back anyway. So I should be better off starting last. To be honest, <laughs> it was it was one of those evenings. It was shaping up to be one of those one of those evenings. Evenings, the uh, Johnson's Firebird was uh, carving its way up through the field, heading up towards a sixth place by the well, by the start essentially of the uh, second lap. Passing, I think it was Camaro, uh, got past Corvette, was uh, keen to follow through. The Corvette making up a position as well. Yeah, at least it wasn't the final quarter tyre bundle. Sometimes that's where mayhem is caused, as the Corvette gets a good run over the top of the hill, but nowhere to really use it. It was all at that, uh, all at that top of the hill section. At the front, the uh, the lead four breakaway group had splintered off slightly into a pairs with the Chevelle managing to get to the front. The uh, King Cobra was coming under increasing pressure from that Mercury as they head down towards the chicane. It's a lovely, lovely overtaking manoeuvre from the Mercury. The Cobra kind of chased him across the road as much as he could. Uh, the Mercury gets the stop done just on the apex. There's nothing really the four can do. It doesn't quite have the grip to fight back against that uh, that Mercury. Although around the final corner, the King Cobra is having a look. He's having a sniff up the inside to get away with all of that, though. I was on a big old recovery drive in the... Uh, in the Corvette. Uh, thankfully, having only gone on the gravel to avoid incidents, I hadn't got any damage to a deal with. It was my turn to try the big outbreaking maneuver into the chicane. I would get the move done on the Hemi Cuda as we head up towards this final turn. I'm trying to get the move done here. I wanted to get two cars in one go, but it's a little bit dicey. It's always, especially when you've kind of been squeezed across to the inside, you end up on such a shallow line. You actually both end up quite slow off the corner. You can see the Heavy Cuda now uh, fighting back on the outside, although he's unlikely to be able to get that one to work when my Corvette is probably the best handling car of this little group, although still I remain slightly frustrated uh, for over a lap or so, uh, unable to quite get a move completed. The front four did very much run away in this in this field. And that did leave uh, some decent fighting uh, going on further back. El Camino versus Corvette. Corvette having to try and be brave holding that one around the outside. If you can hold it there, you do get the inside out of the chicane and the inside preferred run into the final corner. Still can't quite get there to the El Camino. Johnson's Firebird is around the outside of the Corvette. The El Camino is off the, into the fence, bounces back off the tyre bundle, amazingly gets away with that. Johnson's car's through the middle of this group and moves up. Uh, two positions in almost as many corners. The El Camino's still got a mirror full of Corvettes, although the Corvette's got to worry about another Chevelle as we run towards the top of the hill. Everybody thinks better of trying to fit two cars wide through that section. You can do, but it's often very difficult and quite scary as the El Camino's looking for a way past the Firebird. Corvette's trying to buy it again. Everybody's so busy trying to buy into each other's fights that uh, there's a lot of sort of cars jumping their noses just about alongside them, quickly realising it wasn't quite going to work and having to back out of it. It was... Some quite frantic and exciting racing going on. Uh, this became the battle over, well, kind of third place. The Mercury would uh, continue to work its way up, while the Chevelle would pull a little bit of a gap back to this group. The Camaro looking for a way back past. The Chevy with plenty of speed, but not too much in the way of grip. The King Cobra came from a very long way back. It didn't really look like the manoeuvre was on whatsoever for the, uh, for the Ford. However, with a such better run, through the first corner up towards the top of the hill. The uh, Camaro stuck on the outside. I mean, that's how you get through the top of the hill there too wide. Camaro tries to fight back. Unfortunately, a little bit of a laggy bump between the pair of them would uh, send the Camaro for a little bit of a trip across the uh, gravel. Yeah, that's how you get too wide. You've got to give each other plenty of space through that section. And that is how it would go for the top three. At the front, it would be the Chevelle that would go on to take victory, having been able to uh, get to the lead early on, not make any silly mistakes. I think the Mercury was catching ever so slightly in the closing laps, but it was just not quite enough to ever really get up to the back of the Chevelle. The Chevy taking victory, Mercury in second, while the King Cobra would hold on to a third place. It was uh, plenty busy the back, however, in this large pack of cars. Again, 
all coming down to the final corner. This was the battle for fourth place. The Camaro desperately trying to hold on to that position. Johnson's Fiber was in there. El Camino was there. The Chevelle was there. The Corvette was there. I was only a little bit further back fighting with a Mustang uh, in all of my attempted recovery drive here. Camaro would get a good run out of the chicane. would be able to hold it. The Chevelle tried to go around the outside of the El Camino. Couldn't do it. Johnson almost hit the tie bundle through that final corner uh, trying to get as good a run as possible. Nobody could actually overtake on that final section, but the group finished very, very close together. Uh, the Mustang did hit the tie bundle, uh, but spun across the line ahead of me, or kind of binned it across the line ahead of me. Uh, the final race, we would head to uh, to Homestead, and this time the random grid would actually be kind to me with a relatively nice starting spot for my Corvette as we all pile towards the first corner. And now this was the first time we'd seen somebody run via Jeep CJ5. I've been tempted to build one, uh, knowing that you could make an insane acceleration car out of it. I just fancied having something that was nicer to drive, hence why I ended up with the Corvette. Uh, the Jeeps were stupidly fast accelerating. Uh, note that as we leave turn two or three, we were three wide. And this was a theme that would continue for, well, three corners. Me stuck on the outside for the, well, the two or three quarters. Three wide is me, a Corvette, and I think a Plymouth uh, on the inside here. Uh, still, three wide here at Homestead. We're thankfully, amazingly, just about giving one another like this. There was just enough road there for all three of us to get through here on the opening lap at this circle. Uh, going up towards the hairpin, the Plymouth decides no, it doesn't quite want to be fully involved in that on the way in. On the exit, however, nope, we're back to going three wide, although the GTX can't quite get the speed it needs on the exit. I'm got <laughs> kind of crossover maneuver. We've just about managed to get myself uh, up to this fourth position, although the Corvette has a better run down this straight. I don't really want to be stuck. The Mustang with more speed than all of us squeaked past, although the Mustang can't hold it on the circuit. That will go visit the uh, grass for a little bit. The Corvette, the blue Corvette, trying to uh, regain that position. The Jeep leaves the Mercury, leaves, uh, leads, sorry, a Camaro. Blue Corvette's got back past the Mustang. I'm trying to sneak back past in this group as well, although the Mustang, with all of that straight line speed, would uh, retain the position for now. That's a yellow GTX, not so far behind. A Chevelle in that group as well. Uh, Johnson had uh, brought a pacer for this one that was mighty fast in a straight line, although not very nice through the corners. I just about got it stopped for turn one, and we're back to going side by side. I basically spent most of this entire opening lap and a half side by side with a uh, with a blue Corvette. Makes things quite interesting as a Mustang gets some grass and spins the wheels out of there. <laughs> out of there. It was a mad opening lap, but we did it all without even the slightest of bumps, which is really rather impressive. Johnson's pacer would uh, continue to make progress up through the field in these opening laps, although it continued to be quite the handful. The El Camino very much outturning the pacer, although then we came to a straight. I mean, it looks like it's in a different class in terms of its straight line speed. I'm soaring up the inside of the Plymouth, although then it's very, very difficult to get it stopped when it comes to the corner. In fact, so much so, he gives the Plymouth a little bit of a nudge, although he does wait to let the Plymouth back on the circuit. One of the Mustangs got himself in way more trouble going for a bit of a spin. Again, <laughs> Plymouth's back there. The, oh, the El Camino gets a bit of a nudge from uh, the, I think it was a Chevelle, there's a Dodge Coronet, makes up two positions in all of that. Nice, uh, nice opportunistic grab for the Coronet. And then the rain came. Then, then the rain came. Now, there was only a 40% chance of rain uh, for the mid-race, which is when it started raining, a 60% chance for later on in the race. This was bad news for some of the cars, especially the ludicrously fast pacer. There are other cars, though, that were going to be in trouble as well. Those far more power orientated were always likely to struggle as the going got wetter and wetter. This Coronet, however, you would expect, well, I guess, I was going to say you'd expect a big boat to struggle, but then I guess a big boat would be okay when it got <laughs> into the, uh, got into the raid. Yeah, the Coronet was uh, doing, was doing pretty well. Uh, further back, there was plenty going on. But with this race, you know, not having had a uh, sort of big old either early collision uh, or lag stuff going on. Uh, the field, well, of course, it always does spread out. There was plenty of action uh, going on further back. The red Mustang recovering from a spin. Had it go up the inside of the Challenger. The Challenger gives him as much space as he can in the background. And El Camino makes a move on something purple that I can't quite see uh, what it was. 
through all of that. The uh, challenger not given up on this fight, though. Indeed, the Mustang really, really struggling for grip. It was struggling for grip in the dry, let alone as everything gets rainy. And the Dodge able to uh, retake that position. As the rain fell, my Corvette was not amazing. I preferred it when it was dry. I don't quite know how I'd managed to do that. It, did, it handled very nicely in the dry. In the wet, it just didn't quite work for me either way uh, i was trying desperately to find a way past a camaro i was quicker than the camaro but i knew following me was an el camino and a coronet that were both quicker than me i wanted to get the pass done on the camaro hope the camaro could slow down the cars behind and i could run away a little bit unfortunately for me it was proving quite difficult to overtake said camaro as a little bit well it was an ambitious overtake i thought i could get it stopped not quite a lovely cutback from that uh, Camaro and now the El Camino was coming to join in and that pick up with uh, more speed than I had down this back straight I really didn't want to shove my nose through the middle of this and uh, make it three wide there's really uh, not a huge amount of place to go I tried to cut back to the inside on the exit which uh, will be I got my car there I just didn't quite get the the run I didn't quite get the momentum off of the corner that uh, that I really needed and there came the coronet somehow I'd managed to stay stuck behind the Camaro while the two fast cars had found their way <laughs> past me it wasn't the most successful defense of my position in uh, in all of that but uh, there we go Johnson's pacer as you can perhaps imagine was not so happy now the uh, now the rain was falling it was very very sideways I mean once it got some traction it was still very fast down the straight which meant the um, Chevelle here was having some real difficulties finding way past now remember that Chevelle absolutely monstered its way past my Corvette when it was at road I think it was that Chevelle monstered its way past the Corvette at Road America. It was a pretty damn fast car in a straight line. It gets made to look very ordinary by the, by the pacer. Uh, however, you know, the pacer was such a horrendous handful when it came through the corners that all of the progress early on uh, kind of started going backwards, uh, backwards a, a little bit. Although it certainly wasn't the only car struggling. Unfortunately, it was kind of around this point that the replay gave up. Uh, we've had this problem before. I, I think I've had this problem before with Homestead in the Rain. I'm not sure whether Homestead in the Rain makes for an excessively large replay size that, that causes issues for Forza. Either way, yeah, we, we don't have the final few laps of the race. At the front, a Jeep CJ5 would take victory. We saw its launch off the line. It was leading relatively okay, and then the rain comes, and it's the only all-wheel drive car out here. Yeah, the, the Jeep was, pretty, was working pretty damn well when it comes to... Uh, comes to Miami here. I think it was a Mercury in second with an El Camino uh, getting to the podium in third. I also don't have the podium screens. I apologize for that. Uh, for whatever reason, all three of the recordings I did are completely broken. I don't know what my capture card was up to that night when I was... I, I leave it running in case a replay gets corrupted. I leave I leave it I leave it on for all of the races and would leave it on for the, the podium scenes. Uh, however... All three of those recordings are corrupted. I'm glad I do have the replays because yeah, all three of them uh, do not work. They look it looked like they worked while I was doing it, but uh, I haven't seen the issue since. Unfortunately, yeah, they are all broken. I had a lot of fun with my Corvette. I think it was perhaps lacking a little bit in terms of in terms of power, a little bit in terms of speed. Uh, it did well. I liked it. It was a very very nice car to drive. It was a lovely balanced car to drive. Um, yeah, at a couple of couple of tracks, it's perhaps slight lack of power did uh, did let it down. I also get stuck in traffic constantly, which also wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have helped massively. But yeah, I had fun. I had fun racing that uh, that car. Uh, that though is going to be it for this week. Uh, if you'd like to have a look at uh, Johnson's viewpoint from these races, uh, there will be a link to his video, hopefully, in the description of this. As soon as I can get it, I will uh, put it up there. If you want to sign up and take part in the next Versus the Community, then you can via our forums. There'll be a link in the description. Uh, it is going to take place on Thursday the 10th of April. Uh, May, sorry. Uh, we're going to go racing with A-Class Ferraris. Should be uh, should be an interesting one. Some interesting car choices. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have some some fun classic cars to play with as well. Um, that though is going to be it for today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.